and welcome to the Q3 nine months FY24 conference call of Fed Bank Financial Services hosted by Equiris Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anuj Mohata from Equity Securities. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Anuj. Thank you, Riku. Good afternoon, Anuj. I welcome you all to the earnings conference call of Edmund Financial Services to discuss the Q3 9 months FI24 performance of the company. We have the senior management team with us, represented by Mr. Anil Kothori, MD and CEO, Mr. C.V. Ganesh, CFO. Mr. Ramit Singh, Head Investment Relation. I would like now like to hand over the call to Anil sir, Anil sir for his opening remarks, post which we can open the floor for question and answer. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Anuj, and welcome uh, to everyone uh, on this call. Uh, we finished our board meeting a couple of hours ago and have declared our Q3 results. Uh, this was a uh, Profit after tax of 654 million, 65.4 crore rupees for the quarter. That's a 28% growth on a year-on-year -year basis. Our uh, return on assets was 2.5% and our return on equity was 14.3%. That was for the quarter gone by. Now, this was on the back of uh, an AUM growth of 34% year-on-year. Our AUM in uh, the quarter was uh, 107.1 billion rupees. This AUM was because we had uh, disbursals of 33 billion rupees for the quarter, okay, which includes 11.2 uh, billion for gold and the remainder, which is uh, about almost 22 billion for non-gold. So our disbursements have grown. Uh, 24% uh, year-on-year and 21% quarter-on-quarter. So we've seen some disbursement growth in the quarter gone by. Uh, as far as asset quality is concerned, uh, our actual uh, our uh, level of absolute GNPAs have actually declined by 8.18 crore rupees, okay, and by 15 basis points quarter-on-quarter. Uh, quarter. So our GNPA or gross stage three. Uh, stand at 2.2%. Uh, the other uh, important fact on asset quality is that we've taken up uh, our LGDs on mortgage loans to 23% from the earlier 20%. So we've uh, taken up our provision by about 3% on mortgage loans. So as a consequence of this, our overall PCR is now 24.5% and our next stage 3 is 1.7%. During the quarter, we commenced uh, co-lending on gold loans, and the co-lending uh, AUM stands at uh, 1.8 billion rupees. Okay, we started this in uh, December, and in one month, we've covered about 1.8 billion rupees. We've also sold down uh, our portfolios through direct assignment transactions. So, um, 46. Uh, uh, for, uh, uh, 457 crore rupees was the total quantum of uh, portfolios uh, sold, the investor share of the portfolios sold. Um, the other positive development uh, that has happened, albeit after December 31st, was the fact that our credit rating has got upgraded. We are now rated AA plus stable by care ratings. Now, this is a two-notch upgrade over the past 14 months. We used to be AA- minus till December 22. And in December 22, we got upgraded to AA. And January 24, we got upgraded to AA+. Plus. Crystal has also rated us, and we are rated AA positive. This happened in the first week of January. So the outlook uh, for Q4 remains good and strong. Our disbursals have grown in Q3 and we continue to grow in Q4. And uh, this is because we are now present in 17 states and union territories, 609 branches. Uh, we added two branches in uh, 
the quarter gone by. Um, so with that preamble, I'll open up for questions and uh, yeah. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use answers while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Samir Vise from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a good quarter. Uh, and I just wanted to understand uh, how do you see the ROA flow through for a co lending model in gold? Uh, and uh, also, uh, what are the current rates of direct assignment that you guys are getting? These are my two questions. Thank you. Um, the ROAs on gold will uh, obviously be very high, Samir. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, 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 is twofold. Uh, the first is that our overall AUM goes up because we have access to a segment that we hitherto wouldn't cater to. Our uh, 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 yields on our gold loan book are about 17 and a half, 17.75. Okay, we've stayed anchored to that yield. Because we do co-lending, we are able to access customers at lower price points. And let's say we have somebody at 13.5%. So the difference between 13.5% and 9.5% is 4%. 80% of the loan goes to the partner's book, 20% stays on our book. So it is what, 4% into 5, which is a 20% that you get on your own capital in terms of uh, the spread alone. Okay. So that's uh, that's uh, in comparison with the normal 10% or 9% spread that you get on a regular home loan. So obviously it is ROA accretive, ROE accretive uh, for uh, uh, the co-lending business. Now okay. as far as our uh, um, mortgage and unsecured DAs are concerned, uh, mortgage DAs are concerned, the sell down rate is uh, approximately close to our cost of borrowing. So, which is why we pursued the sell-down strategy, or uh, uh, because it also releases capital, which we can uh, redeploy. For unsecured loans, there's obviously a premium of 100 basis points over our current borrowing rates. Okay, and uh, how much of co-lending do we intend to kind of scale this up to? Um, We'll wait and watch the next quarter, but our intent is to take it up to as uh, much as is possible because it is hugely capital efficient for us. And uh, we will just see how the uh, subsequent quarter goes and we will scale it up uh, quite significantly for me. Okay. Uh, great. That's all for my side. I'll come back in the few days of other questions. Thank you and all the best. Thanks so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Vivek Ramakrishnan from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Good evening and congratulations. Uh, my question is on the credit environment that you're seeing. Uh, is it still robust collection efficiency is holding up? And uh, the provisions that you have made, uh, you know, you've uh, nudged up the loss given default. So could you just explain the methodology around that? Those are my uh, two questions. Thank you. Uh, so the firm, uh, hi Vivek. So the first question first, the overall uh, credit environment I think uh, continues to be benign in that uh, our, our collections are on track and we see our customers, uh, you know, paying up. So so I, I have no comment, uh, I have no additional uh, point to make other than the fact that it continues to be robust. Um, Yeah, the LGD, uh, 
what happens is that we've had uh, uh, LGDs of about 19-ish percent uh, thus far. So what we've done this quarter is to take up the LGD on mortgage loans from 19 to 23 percent. 20, uh, 20? Yeah, 21. The, 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 uh, we, we used to have a management overlay of 1%. Now what we've done is to take the whole thing up to 23%. This is an annual uh, uh, you know, refresh exercise that we do, and we've done that, and we've taken up to 23%. Yeah. Thank you very much, and uh, wish you all the best. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Madhu Chanda Day from MC Pro. Please go ahead. Hi, I have a question on your interest margin. Like this quarter, we saw a tad a drop in the interest margin, but as you mentioned that you have seen uh, credit rating upgrades it should have a positive impact on your borrowing cost. Uh, you are uh, <clears throat> getting more aggressive through the co-lending in gold loan, which is also a high-yielding uh, segment. Uh, given all these pieces and given that you have raised a lot of capital also, what is your take on interest margin going forward, maybe in FY25, if you could give us some color? Uh there are uh, three factors uh, which will come into play uh, in terms of our interest margin in the coming quarter uh, or in the coming year. The first is the fact that our product mix will continually get enriched by higher yield products, okay, whether it is small mortgages or uh, gold loans. So that is point number one. Point number two is that we will continue to do co-lending, so therefore there is a lower capital and there is no interest cost to be paid on that. So that is the second point. The third point is that we very recently got a rating upgrade, so it will hopefully have a positive impact on our cost of borrowing. That is number three. Uh, uh, count of, uh, uh, against all of this, there is the fact that there has been an increase in risk weights uh, uh, over the past uh, 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 what month or so after the RBI circular and the effect of that is not yet played out. We also have money that we've raised in the IPO, okay, which uh, you know we've seen the impact for only one month in the quarter gone by. So we'll see the entire full three month impact in the in the subsequent quarter. So that will also take up our uh, margin. So these are the different factors at play because of which I expect that we will reasonably maintain the current margins if not improve on them. Okay, I mean, uh, as you uh, rightly mentioned, which will in, uh, this increase in risk weight is going to increase your cost of bank borrowing, right? Uh, uh, what kind of conversations are you having? What kind of uh, uh, increase in rates do you expect because of this? So, so can I come in here, Anil? Sorry. Yeah, please go ahead, Ganesh. Yeah, yeah, Mato. So we have had conversations with banks. And uh, we have reason to believe that we will come out relatively with a lower increase in rates than we had originally guided. And we also believe that we will come out with a lower increase in rates than the peer group. I mean, why is that? Uh, because of your credit rating? Various factors, right? Uh, please also note that currently, we are sitting, as of 31st of December, we are sitting on cash and cash equivalents of about a little over 1,500 crores. Okay, we, we have the IPO money which has come in, plus we have our regular liquidity and investment. Now, this amount would typically cover, uh, you know, at least five to six months of disbursements in a, in a normal year, right? So, we are sufficiently... Uh, uh, carrying uh, uh, liquidity, and I think from a, uh, it positions us well to have these conversations with the banks. Also, the fact that you know our uh, lending is non-consumer, it is to the MSMEs. You know that's also a, a strong point which positions us well in these conversations. 
yeah i'm sorry i cannot give you more guidance than this but uh, you know all of this will play out in q4 and you will i think when we come out with the full year results you will uh, get to see a little more data around this okay i just one question which is a little general question some of the other gold loan financing companies that we speak to we have been saying that because of the increase in risk weightage on uh, you know unsecured consumer loans uh, that could in actually uh, motivate people to you know take gold loans uh, in case if they have surplus gold in their household do you see this factor playing out at all is there any any kind of credibility to this kind of a uh, uh, argument um difficult to say am i chanda i tell you why okay uh, one hand the kind of person who borrows against gold is completely different from the unsecured uh, customer okay so that is my intuitive understanding the second thing is that once people uh, begin to take on debt okay they will need to uh, it becomes a lifestyle and they will need to substitute with other, uh, other kinds of debt that is also uh, a feature of uh, you know the lending industry so there could be some migration of unsecured uh, to gold but really uh, the kind of people who borrow small ticket unsecured is different from the kind of people who take gold loans the customer profile is different uh, is different so i think the impact may be there but will be muted that's my at least you you guys have not seen it so far yes we haven't seen anything so far okay thank you thanks for all answering all my questions all the best thank you Our next question is from the line of Nishchin Chawate from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. I have just a, a small question. Uh, you know, how do you think about leverage? Uh, you know, optimal leverage for the business, and uh, what is the conversation with rating agencies on this? So, can I take this question? Yeah. Thank you, Anil. Yes. So, Nishchin, you know, we are. all said and done the subsidiary of a bank right and that means that from a financial leverage while it is a hypothetical construct for most nbfcs for us it is a demonstrable lever and our banking covenants permit us to go up to 6 and a half to 7x over equity okay so that's the extent to which we can currently lever based on our partnerships with lending institutions however i think in the course of the uh, you know the last few quarters we have also embarked on a journey of as we have put in our deck uh, you know delivery on strong margins strong roas and strong roe so what the whole securitization and co lending program is to uh, you know help us allocate the equity we have to the higher yielding loans and at the same time collaborate with partners who have access to lower cost of funds than us to ensure that we do not vacate the other segments and are also making margins there without allocating equity what that does if it permits us to travel far with with a, you know with a lesser amount of equity so essentially you know i think uh, what we have demonstrated is one, with two things one with the fresh equity raise as well as this monetization program of loans we have like a solar charged battery we have a borrowing substitute in the form of these two instruments which should allow us to go much further with much lesser gearing than what we had originally estimated and that is precisely why and one of the bigger reasons why you know all the rating agencies have uh, taken a very positive uh, or upgraded view on us because they are they see us as being able to not only lower gearing over an extended period of time but they also at the same time 
see us being able to generate stronger uh, return metrics. So, so I think net net, what we are saying is that maybe you, you scan theoretically go up to six, six and a half to seven times on balance sheet, and you can probably have another 20, 25 percent outside the balance sheet. Is that a fair reading? That would be a fair statement. Whether we choose to go there or not would be a choice on us, right? But uh, you know, I think uh, we would have our own criterion from time to time. But yes, some of these levers are available to us. So. And the second question is on your coverage on stage two and three loans. We are seeing a gradual inch up uh, on a sequential basis. So is this uh, sort of you know some revisit uh, you know of 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 uh, you know estimated losses or is it to do with uh, just the changing product mix? So okay. uh, stage two and three have to do with product mix, Yanish. Okay. Because as for each product, there is a certain uh, uh, model LGD that uh, is required. So depending on the change in mix of uh, by each stage, the the ECL provision is an output variable. And how many years of data have you considered for calculating LGDs, and then how 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 frequently does this get revisited? So we refresh the uh, our uh, our uh, LGDs every year. Okay, and we've been considering data since uh, 2017. So how many years is that? That's about uh, six years of data at this point in time. So, so you consider data since 2017, and it's not like rolling six years, but you know you keep on sort of you know adding to the data, and uh, you probably revisit it like I mean once a year is like typically fourth quarter, is it or like first quarter? So that's right. So this time we've done it at the end of the third quarter. Okay. So 2017 to 2023 is six year data that we have. So mm -hmm. uh, on that basis, we worked our LGDs that uh, that you see on slide 37 of our investor data. Okay, so then you, you so you have revisited something between the second and the third quarter. That's what my question was. That's right. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much and all the best. Yeah, Nishant, I'll just add one point just to add a little more color to the optics around what you may see as the coverage on stage two and stage three. Currently, 86% of our loan book is secured, right? And uh, secured either by gold or property. And if you see the LTVs we have published, the LTVs on the properties in the range of 52 to 55%. And on the gold loans is 70%. So when you look and form a view on the coverage, Please also consider the security covers we run with. Yes, of course, no doubt. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Renish Pua from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, there's two questions from my side, one on the credit cost side. Please Sorry please to interrupt, sir. Uh, May we request you to use your answer? Please, your uh, audio is not clear, sir. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Just two questions from my side. So one on the credit cost side. So if you look at the uh, sequential movement uh, in the ECL uh, provision, so the net increase is uh, hardly 10, 11 crore, but our penal provision is close to 25 odd crore. So I'm, I'm assuming there will be some write-offs. So can you please throw some light on this uh, write-off numbers too? So yeah, we have done a 17 crore rupee write-off uh, in the quarter gone by. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that uh, uh, includes uh, uh, mortgage loans, unsecured loans, as well as gold loans. So that's the number that uh, we've done. Uh, in in Q3, you have done 17 crore write-off. Okay. What's the write-off number in this quarter? Q3. Q3 is the quarter gone by, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. And yeah. so going ahead, uh, I mean, uh, uh, let's say the, uh, uh, you know, the annualized credit cost, uh, which stood at 0.9% or let's say 90 basis point in Q3, including mm. these write-offs. Mm. So uh, what should be the steady state credit cost? I mean, or if you can throw some light on the, uh, let's say, uh, uh, write-off pool, which we might have as on Q3. Uh, 
my our our sense is that the standard credit cost should be about 80ish basis points yeah. so that's what we will guide okay okay two three uh obviously we take uh, we take these rights right off on a on a on a chunky episodic kind of a basis so we chose to do uh, some of it in q3 so which is why the okay. number is uh, 17 crore rupees right. got it got it got it okay so should we assume this is a peak right off at least for this year so can i can i come in here rinesh yeah yeah, yeah please sir yeah yeah See, you know the fact that we have increased our pcr Mm -hmm. right on the on the mortgage book which constitutes over 55% of our total book means that we have done a pcr increase on the entire stock in q3 right, right? right. so it's like a one time raising on the entire book right so that uh, in that sense it's it's like a, a not a frequent exercise right so like right. for example the same pcr in q4 would be only on the incremental loan got it got it got it yeah so i think with that perspective it should come back to a more normalized uh, number got towards it. the range which and indicated got it got it sir and sir my uh, next question is on the uh, uh, let's say the uh, uh, eom mix side so you know clearly uh, you know when we look at ppt uh, incrementally we are growing uh, high lending book which is uh, your gold in this multi kit lab Uh, so what should be the ideal mix let's say by 25 in terms of uh, small ticket lab plus gold loan put together and if uh, that has to play out you know over next 4 to 5 quarters so why do you see the asset on yield settling and uh, ultimately the names because naturally if you if we continue to grow our uh, high lending book uh, that will have a positive impact on names so how do you see this uh, uh, name profile internally Uh, let's talk about the product mix first and the name yeah. uh, separately okay yes now yes. we have three of our products which yield 17% plus okay which is right. gold loans small mortgage and uh, unsecured loans okay Correct. now the proportion of uh, uh, medium ticket mortgage uh, is lower and it is uh, going to keep coming down okay right now as, uh, overlay on this the fact that we are going to do co lending so therefore mm -hmm. your yield will be a little higher because you recognize only the spread on the uh, uh, on the uh, on the rented yeah. book yeah correct so therefore there is uh, an upward bias to the yields you know for mm. these two factors okay mm. so i am happy and comfortable guiding that our nims will be at definitely there at the current levels you know and how much they will improve by we will be able to cast once we do the annual lab operating plan for the next year got it got it but uh, so directionally i mean uh, considering the recent uh, rating upgrade plus uh, you know considering the business model wherein we don't have any uh, sizable exposure to any unsecured pl you know wherein the risk weight will come into picture when it comes to borrowing cost so directionally mean should improve right i mean considering the eu mix change towards 17% yield book plus the rating upgrade Yes, names uh, should definitely be at least at the current level, if not better. Yes. Okay. 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 That is for my side, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Rani. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next question is from the line of Bhavik Dave from Nippon India Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good evening, sir. There are a few questions. One is uh, just to ask a little bit on the main main argument. Sir, maybe request you to use your handset, sir. The audio is. slightly muffled so yeah is it better now yes sir please go ahead yeah okay sorry uh, so just a little uh, just to dig a little deeper into the name argument just wanted to understand what's our incremental cost of borrowing uh, after like suppose we got a rating upgrade the incremental cost of borrowing has it come down meaningfully for us no so the rating upgrade is only uh, 10 days old bhavik and we haven't Correct. done any borrowing since then So, okay. uh, so, so uh, I, there is no obviously impact as yet uh, that is crystallized. But sure. you know, give it a little time, and I'm sure it will have uh, the appropriate impact on our cost of borrowing. Because when we look at the quarter-on-quarter -quarter cost of borrowing movement, it's like even if we've not borrowed quite a bit, the cost of funds increased from eight and a half to eight point seven. That's a twenty basis point up move, considering we had like capital benefit this time around. just trying to understand uh, are we like borrowing at a significantly higher cost today and that will 
come down post this upgrade like uh, what was like maybe the incremental cost of borrowing before this upgrade if i like ask the other way around so can i come in here and can i yeah, yeah, yes so bobic uh, you know again you know we cannot give out numbers which are not already in the public domain sure right? but i'll tell you the argument for nim mm-hmm. expansion okay mhm just before the equity raise yeah we were running at a leverage of 5.5 correct september reported number was 5.45 by november it had crossed 5.5 5.55 correct as a result of the equity raise the december uh, uh you know mentioned gearing mm-hmm. is 3.69 sure okay that is a significant drop in gearing correct now from a nim expansion if you have more equity correct that also results in a expansion of net interest income so that's point number yes. one yes okay now on the borrowing side the banks or, or our lending partners have uh, you know always seen us as different from the peer group with the same rating perfect isn't it so you know the impact of this would be in two ways one a double a plus gives us access to uh, maybe funds which earlier had a threshold which would not permit them to invest in us so it gives us access to deeper pools of liquidity <clears throat> than what we earlier had and per se on the market borrowing side mm-hmm. it opens up pools which were not earlier available to us or may have been available at a higher cost okay sir sure. now when and how much this will play out till bit into the future it will have to be seen as you know right now uh, you know rbi is tightening liquidity uh, around bank lending to nbfcs mm-hmm. and in line with our earlier guidance you know i think when the times are tough for nbfcs bank owned nbfcs like us uh, come out with a, a, a better advantage than some of the other peers i think that's the limited point we are making and that should okay. also help both from an availability and a cost of funding on a relative basis we believe we will continue to enjoy those advantages which will be further boosted by the upgrade understood uh and second sir uh, again uh, a question regarding your uh, incremental growth right like when you see our disbursements this quarter the growth is significantly coming from small ticket and medium ticket lab right just want to understand from you uh, one is uh, how is the yield or the competitive density in these in these segments because a lot of affordable housing companies are also getting a little uh, competitive when it comes to lab in the small and medium ticket uh, uh this, that question number one so yields on on this product how are they shaping up second is on the business loans when i see your uh, uh last four or five quarters the, the numbers that you have reported the number is like hovering around this 300 to th- sorry 330 340 to 350 360 crore range uh, uh any any thoughts on this uh, why are we not like maybe increasing intensity or what's happening on this part of the loan book that's question two sure so yeah so look competition always exists okay but uh, it is uh, quite low in the small mortgage segment okay that's because uh, we are present in uh, several states you know 17 states and uh, you know there is nobody else who is present in so many states there are regional players and there are players who go deeper into the market as opposed mm-hmm. to wider like us so therefore uh, there is less competition in the kind of ticket size that we cater to the competition tends to be a little more concentrated in slightly smaller ticket sizes 8 lakh rupees you know 7 lakh rupees that kind of stuff mm-hmm. our average ticket size is 12 13 lakh rupees yeah okay uh, so it's it's a re- uh, the second point is that it's a reasonably virgin market and it's getting created as we speak and my estimate is about 3% of the overall loan against property aum is in this segment and mm-hmm. all even this 3% has got created over the past maybe 4 5 years that's that's my assessment so that's sure. as far as competition is concerned correct now in terms of unsecured uh, we keep our originations calibrated to our risk appetite okay correct we we want to keep less than 15% of our book as unsecured the current number is 13% and directionally correct. take this down okay 
and our strategy is to originate and sell uh, uh, the bulk of this down you'll notice uh, on like on one of our slides slide 25 that our mm -hmm. percentage of off book for unsecured has actually increased it used to be 27% now it's now 32% a year ago it was 13% so we have these these relationships and these pipes in place now. So right. we will take up our unsecured originations to you know to feed the appetite of our buyers uh, in future. Understood. And uh, sir, one more question is regarding the uh, the the, uh, the conversation around increasing our uh, our PCR or the ECS on stage two and stage three. When I see our business mix increase uh, is broadly more towards the lab the small and medium ticket lab over the last whatever nine months uh, uh, so uh, in that context uh, uh, what led to this increase because uh, the, the, even after the increase you're still a little lower than a, a lot of these affordable housing companies who do both housing and lab in that eight to ten lakh ticket size you think this 24 25 odd percent ecl we have on state three is good to go for now and we won't require any further uh, change in this is that the way to think about it so what we have is the lgd on the entire stock and we do an annual refresh of the exercise uh, of sure. the uh, of the entire stock so the most recent uh, refresh was done using data ended uh, november 30th okay on mm -hmm. on that basis this is more than adequate okay sure now obviously we keep doing this every year and uh, you know the number will either go up or down depending on how the portfolio and our collections have performed and stuff okay so so that's the point about this uh, we've guided that we'd like to keep taking this up and we will keep taking the provisioning up uh, you know with the passage of time understood and sir last question is on your operating expenses and like when i see your other ex operating expenses x of employee that remains flat quarter on quarter and we've seen like a healthy disbursement growth this quarter just wanted to understand uh, what's playing out here and what uh, is a 56 percent cost to income that we've achieved which is, a, uh, which is a big deal in terms of the quarter on quarter decline uh, do you think that this is sustainable uh, anything on the other operating expenses that we've been able to deliver this quarter uh, how are you thinking about it like is 56 percent cost to income a, a, a reasonable uh, a number to work with or do you think that Maybe this was a one-off, and it will like go back to that 58, 60 or percent level that we were at. Uh, so the I'll tell you uh, the different moving parts here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So last quarter we had the IPO money for what 20 days, 25 days or something. Okay. Correct. This quarter we will have the IPO money for the entire quarter. Correct. Okay? obviously the income will go up to that extent okay yes. so that is one moving point the second thing is that uh, uh, normally your get your cost gets reset in the first quarter of the year and the impact mm -hmm. uh, of your know, impact of that increase happens in the first and second quarters okay right. that is now behind us okay? right q4 in uh, for everybody tends to be an extension of q3 in terms of you know how the costs play out and stuff okay? yeah for these reasons, I believe that uh, you know uh, we are uh, the gains that we made uh, will probably consolidate on those in the uh, subsequent quarters. Okay. Because uh, I'll just absolutely, add, sorry, I'll just add one point to what Anil said. Yeah, that is that. See, we normally front end the branch expansion. Correct. So this year, in the first half of the year, we added 34 branches to our mm -hmm. small ticket lap and affordable home loan network. Yes. So in the last three years, you would have seen that we have grown from about 59 branches to about 172 at current. Correct. Correct. Right? That's a significant increase in firepower yeah. for this high leasing product. Now, right. there is a product. Now, obviously, there are new hires who have come in. We have done mm -hmm. some re-engineering of the construct in mm -hmm. terms of the credit and underwriting teams and so on. Now, mm -hmm. this this engine will slowly start firing with higher productivity. Right? Okay. And uh, you know, so that also will translate to a improvement in OPEX. See, I think last time, last the last quarter when we guided, 
I think what what we took pains to say is that we don't see this as a sprint, right? We see it mm. as a marathon. Yes. We will not compromise on the build expense. Hmm. We are in it for the long haul. Correct. Right. We have to go far, and we will build it surely, but slowly, but very clearly. You know, I think uh, uh, there is a, a commitment out there in terms of bringing down the cost to income in a gradual way. Right. There are also economies of scale playing in. Mm-hmm. Right. All of this will help us in the journey to optimizing OPEX to AUM and OPEX to AUS, and consequently expansion of ROEs. Sure, sure. But from a one-year or a two-year perspective, this 5.5 percent that we've achieved this quarter. You think this will, like, eventually trend down? Uh, maybe in FI 25, 26, it will maybe improve by 10, 20 basis point every year. Is that like a fair assumption? We don't want to put numbers out there. All okay. we are guiding is gradual improvement in margin. Sure, fair point. All right. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Subhranshu Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Um, hi, sir. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, three or four questions. The first one is uh, given the fact that we are focusing more on uh, mod features, uh, and uh, we also have a substantial part of the gold loans. Uh, the 23% uh, LVD is largely coming out of the mortgages because the LVDs for gold loan would be lower. That's the first question. Second is the uh, if I can just maybe request yeah. you to use your handset, sir. Your audio is not clear, sir. Okay, one second. Hello, is this clear? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Right. So uh, the, uh, the first question is around the LGD. If we can uh, spin out the LGD for each product, because uh, I think the nineteen twenty-three percent increase in the LGD, uh, 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 my suspect uh, suspicion is that it starts most uh, mostly because of mortgages. The gold loans won't have such high LGDs. So if we can spin out the LGDs, also because we are taking six years of data for the LGD. So when we roll it over uh, the uh, next few years, the COVID impact would also come off. So should we see uh, LGTs coming off in the uh, next couple of years, and we should see improvement in uh, ECL uh, uh, coverage uh, going forward? The, uh, and uh, the third would be around OPEX. What sort of uh, uh, employee uh, addition and branch addition are we going to look at in FY25? We have had a sharp increase in the last three four years. Uh, so, uh, and uh, if we can uh, speak on the risk management in the unsecured as well as a small ticket lab, thanks. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, I'll uh, take your questions one after the other. Uh, the first up, uh, uh, you had a question on <coughs> increase in branches. So this year, what we've done is to take up our small mortgage branches, whereas we focused on taking up the AUM in the existing gold loan branches. So that's why our small mortgage branches have increased uh, from 130, so about 50-ish branches we've opened this year. Now, every year when we make the annual operating plan, we firm up the expansion, whether it's for gold or mortgage. and that process is underway so specifically where we will add branches in the coming year i will be able to talk about in the subsequent call so at this point in time we are uh, rationing out branches across these businesses and we will firm that up uh, by the end of the month okay. the second thing is uh, for gold the ngd is 0.75% okay so that is what the model uh, says and uh, uh, obviously there is uh, nearly no loss to be had uh, on the gold npas that is transient It gets created at 90 dpd and extinguished by 150 dpd so you will carry about 60 days of uh, npa on gold now uh, in future what will happen to the lgds uh, you know uh, well uh, it obviously depends on uh, the collection performance in the current year okay and uh, 
and really how, how, how what the translation of uh, one bucket to the next is and how much we are able to collect and arrest and most importantly how are how much we are able to crystallize in terms of loss at the time of enforcement of collateral but uh, it's reasonably fair to say that uh, there is a certain industry standard for mortgages and we are kind of there now how much we will uh, seek to provide against that is a matter of choice the industry is at about 25 ish percent and we are at about 23 so there's not too much of uh, gap uh, finally in terms of risk management uh, i'll just encapsulate this in a nutshell uh, we choose our markets with some care and caution we make uh, use of uh, data from the bureau as well as intelligence from the market and open up branches we seek to populate our branches with people who have relevant experience in the same geography so that nuances of either property or business in a specific location are understood and individual learning translates into organized uh, organization learning. Uh, we have a standard personal discussion template okay, based on which there is uh, uh, there are decisions made Essentially, what we do is to try and ascertain the individual's income for mortgage loans as accurately as we can. We seek to triangulate it using various data points, which is to say that if he has a certain surplus every month, we try and see what he's done with that surplus the, year, the, the past year or the year after and use that to validate our, uh, our, our assessment. Uh, we have a salesperson, a credit person, and a collections person in each branch so that uh, we are able to optimize our performance on all three vectors. As far as unsecured lending is concerned, we lend to, only to customers who have uh, uh, declared income on their documents. Okay, Typically, these customers have P&L, balance sheet, tax returns, audited financials, and uh, about 30% of our customers are objective uh, uh, rejects and uh, the remainder are subjective rejects and uh, that's the way uh, this works. So uh, some data regarding the quality of the book is provided on slide 34 with regard to the kind of uh, score bands uh, of customers that we link to. Yeah, so this is a bird's eye view of our risk management. Um, if you could just spell out uh, one question you meant on answer, what's the LGT product wise? Uh... Roger, product wise, LGD, uh, mortgage is 23, gold is 0. 0.75, and unsecured we write off at 90 DPD. Yeah. Understood, sir. Thank you so much. I'll come back and meet you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may press star and one. We have a question from the line of Sagar Doshi from into it investment please go ahead yeah uh, so basically just wanted to know like uh, we are on a small base as of now and looking at the leverage that we can uh, pull off uh, what is the growth rate can that could be expected let's say a year or uh, for the two year period from now on um. So you look at our past, we had a thousand crore rupees of retail AUM in FY28, and as of uh, right now, we are at uh, just shy of 11,000 crores. It is, the opportunity is vast. We have all the resources, branches, employees, as well as capital and uh, the ability to raise debt. So from here on, I'm happy guiding a, a compounded growth rate of 25%, and we will try and top that. Okay. 
and any other new products uh, that we may go in uh, apart from what we are doing no for the foreseeable future we will optimize our performance in the products that we offer right now and we will refine our current operating model for superior results okay thank you thank you uh before we take the next question a reminder to all participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question our next question is from the line of subranchu mishra from philip capital please go ahead hi so thank you for taking my question again uh, which part of the talk are we going to do uh, the co lending in and uh, second question is how do we differentiate our gold loan portfolio from our parents uh, gold loan portfolio uh currently we have co lending arrangements for gold loans okay and uh, that has got tested through the month of december and we're going to scale that up uh, in the coming quarter okay uh as far as our parent federal bank is concerned they lend to a different segment of customers their average ticket size is between 3 and 4 times our average ticket size and their average yield on the portfolio are also significantly lower than ours look at the previous uh, 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 quarter's investor deck you will see that their uh, yields are i think about uh, 10.15 or so percent okay our yields on the gold loan portfolio are upwards of 17 and a half percent so we cater to a completely different uh, customer base in uh, different uh, geographies so it's it's, it's different yeah understood thank you so much hmm? yeah well thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question of our question and answer session as there are no further questions i would like to hand the conference over to mr anuj mohata for closing comments yeah thank you zico once again thank you all for participating in the call and we would like to thank the management of red bank financial services for giving us the opportunity to host this call Thank you, everybody, and have a good evening. Thanks, guys. Have a good result season. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Equity Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.